The room is shrouded in mystery's embrace. You dwell in shadow, a tranquil space, a passive heart, a dormant soul, as life's stories continue to unroll. Wicked skies hide the desert. The rain falls hard. The night floods every nook available. The flash of a match bites the air. He holds it close. The smell of sulfur. His cigarette lights on the first attempt. He flicks the remainder of the burning stick into the nearest puddle just beyond the shelter of the tin overhang. Hiss. The door is open behind him and the sound of static claws the darkness. Big droplets strike his turquoise Chevy coupe like thrown quarters. The soft rumble of the black 18-wheeler beyond the pumps of the gas station matches his heart. A light strobes within the cabin of the truck. The man can't help but notice someone basking in the amber hue. He squints, focuses on the face. It watches him, smiling. The flimsy pine door shuts with a light click. Static crackles on the Electra home TV. The digital clock blinks. 3.33 a.m. in faded green. He shuts the thick blinds and lifts his duffel bag onto the one of the twin beds. His varsity jacket, black and white, with a jester patch on its back, drips all over the linoleum. He takes his black slicked back hair and combs it flat. He pulls leather driving gloves from his back pockets. They are stiff from exposure to moisture. He places a stool in the far corner of the room. He then unzips the bag slowly, each tooth snapping as the hunting bow crawls out. He removes the bow and one poison-tipped arrow, then sits down. He aims it at the hollow door. The rain and the static melt together. He clears his throat, hunches over slightly. The TV cuts out. The room becomes black and dead. The silence is aggressive. He is not alone. Figures, he says, loud enough to hear. His broken grimace reflects her gaze as she peers through the window. The tension holds tight, like a fist full of piano wire, and the sound of the doorknob twisting sends shivers up the man's spine. The door whispers. The night is her dusty fur coat. Revenge, her red carpet affair. Her eyes are tiny candles licking the open heart she intends to work on. The flames command attention, alluring and twisting. The surgeon enters the room. She can taste the tears in his eyes from afar. A jagged grin creases her skeletal face. Her leather jacket and pants are taut and dry. Smoke drifts from the surface. A porcelain face floats in the darkness, racked with mania. Deep auburn hair swells like an inky, bloody cloud around her shoulders. What was your name again? She asks from within the howls of the begrudged winds. Crack. The bow's string twangs for a solid minute. The ashes of his lover begin disintegrating. The sticky green linoleum is barren and clean as the dust evaporates, still smiling. After a quick cigarette, he makes for the door, bag in hand. 
the Marlboro tastes stale. The 350 cubic inch motor screams as the Bel Air leaps towards anywhere fast. Lightning stretches across black clouds, grasping. The storm weeps upon the muddy second-hand landscape. Energy begins to whir and thrum. A soft chuckle from inside the motel room slowly raises into a sharp cackle, wretched and gleeful. A shadow darts across the lot towards the 18-wheeler, dragging with it loose debris. The driver's side door slams shut. The big rig, blacker than dread, slowly leaves the station. Her face grins even more, sizing up the straight whip of broken road ahead. Clouds of toxic smoke follow it off in the direction of the gun for hire, forever hunted by whom he admires. The air horns explode echoing across the wasteland as the truck picks up speed. He hears the blast of those horns over his engine. He mashes the pedal. In the shadows, you quietly wait, a passive observer of an empty state. The world outside is dim and cold as your thoughts in the darkness unfold. It's a stupid old house. That's what everyone thinks. Smack dab between Wilson's place, a nice tutor, and Billy's little cottage. Just stupid. I don't know why, it just is. Covered in moss and shit. The people there don't care. I'd have a word with the city about it, but they've never bothered to come and have a look. Bureaucracy, that is. The smacking of the chewing tobacco in the brutish old man's mouth makes the woman in the passenger seat grind her teeth. She opens the car's window to let the cool air into the Volkswagen. He hiccups as they hit a pothole. Came home one night, you see, I have the cottage across the road to myself, and all I hear is bloody Halloween music. It's not like I haven't partied in my time. Mind you, I have. It's just concerning knowing that some poor sap is probably, well, being he spits out of the window, and she hears it land. Let's just call them junkies for the sake of time. Sounds fun. He cranks up the heat. She grabs her canteen and swigs. She starts to roll the window down further. I'm trying to warm up, darling, he says. She looks at him, stern. She doesn't blink. Just turn the heat down, and I'll close the window, she says. They both cooperate. He starts belly laughing, but her mind is elsewhere. Ah, you'll love it, he says. So, uh, will you help me in talking to them? She turns to her brother and blinks twice, slowly. Oh, for Christ. Have you heard a thing I said? Sorry, I've just had a long flight. I want to have good rest for tomorrow. Mum would have wanted us to be at our best, she says. Right. That said... I had asked you to come and talk with the neighbors with me about the noise, he says, holding his breath. All right, all right, I'll do it, but then I'm asleep, she says. Sorted. The Victorian house is barely lit by the crescent moon. Metallic grinding and hissing echo from within its walls. The grass is primordial and thick. Insects hover around the entrance. They approach the derelict doors and knock. Screeches pierce the air. She covers her ears. We need to get the fuck out of here, she says, nudging the big man's round waist. You said you'd help me. You're staying, he says. The door creaks open. The interior of the house is illuminated with red light. She faints instantly striking the soft earth with a thud. He stands straight, an oily-looking shadow with eyes like tiny galaxies emerges from the spiral staircase within. Its mouth is a gateway to the underworld. He can hear the voices of billions of wailing souls. 
he clears the phlegm from his throat and spits, narrowly missing the unconscious woman crumpled beside him. You there. I'm sorry if you haven't noticed, but I've had it up to here with you lately, he says. It begins to unleash waves of energy from its bosom that fill the air with fear. You can moan about it all you want. You know, you've only started squatting here for the last month. He counts his fingers. Yeah, you know, if you really want this dump, then I'd suggest you start fixing it up. Fucking eyesore. He lights a cigarette and hauls. If I can't get any sleep because of your antics, I'm calling the authorities. You've been warned. He almost chokes. He slams the door. In the driveway of the dilapidated home is a wheelbarrow. The tire is flat and it squeaks. He lifts the woman up onto it and crosses the street with her. Narcolepsy. Just her luck. The family is going to have a fit when they find out. A loud zap tears through the neighborhood. Birds flee from nearby trees. He stands for a moment. He drops the wheelbarrow and turns around. The house is completely gone. Where the house once stood is a glowing scarlet pentacle on flattened, scorched earth. He laughs with his entire diaphragm that fades into nothing. Fucking sorted. He revels for a moment, then carries on. To be continued on the next part of the first episode of The Electric Noir. Story, music, and basically everything by Midnight Bandit, a.k.a. Jared D.W. I hope everyone had a wonderful time listening. See you next time. Stay frosty.